And the only question that remains is, is that plateau before or after the hit Waymo like service? Okay. Yeah, that that uh, respectfully, um that's that's a lot of jargon for me. Um with respect to I I'm sorry, can you what's what's the question? Because no, so you're saying their AI is basically their autonomous driving. Is that fair? No, actually, I, what I was asking you was the experts that you speak to, how long have they been in the AI industry? Right. But first, I need to know from you what it is that Tesla has that's AI. And it seems like you're saying it's their autonomous drive. Is that fair? I, I don't understand why you need to know that to answer the question I asked you. Because if Tesla's not involved in AI, then it doesn't matter. A associating them with the current, you know, uh, you know, stock pump du jour, I think is unfair. So I, I need to know what is they it have. You think a yeah. trip they have a neural net processor called a trip chip in their vehicle which drives the vehicle i know you've never been in the vehicle it sounds like you haven't been in it at least since v12 just answer this hypothetically if you must or if you're not going to answer it then i would say don't say you have ai experts because why bring that up if it's not relevant again what does tesla do that is ai that's my question to you what is well, it that AI? What what is Tesla doing that is AI? Why are you yeah, consulting so Gordon, AI So then? Gordon, Meta Meta already mentioned that Tesla created this FSD computer on the car, right? That's an inference computer on the car that drives the car. Right. I mean, so if again, you believe, to, to be very if you clear, believe, to, to dumb this down for for those like myself who aren't so smart, <laughs> um, what you're saying is that their AI is their their autonomous driving. Is that fair? Sure. Or you could go with driver so, assist so if you I'll want to go that with that. Very quickly. I don't think their autonomous driving is AI. Period. End. You think it's hand coded? I think it's 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 their attempt at autonomy and to 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 put that in the AI category, I think is a mistake. And I think it's an attempt at a stock pump. Um I think, you think it's a neural autonomous net? driving technology is as guidehouse ranks it and as my experts um say it is i think it ranks last um and i think it's uh, lackluster versus everything else out there uh because they don't use radar they don't use lidar and anyone who knows this well will tell you you absolutely have to use that with respect to you know ca the kathy wood argument that they have these millions of miles that they use to train the cars i think that's also a myth and untrue um i don't think yeah, that all so, those miles okay. are captured and i don't think their cars are learning so i do right. not think they have ai so I don't think the AI conversation or just that's a uh, you know Gordon that's a that's a hell of a conversation that's a hell of a statement that says autonomous driving has nothing to do with AI. But we let's Meta. I understand you want you have more, but we have other people requesting to speak. So Grant, Doge Army, and then Omar, and then we're going to bring Robert in. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy to be a, a bear representative that maybe has more of an appreciation of some of the nuances around AI. So yeah, I mean, Tesla definitely has AI capabilities. I, I am also a bear on Optimus, though, and would agree with Gordon that it felt like a little bit of a stock pump. Um, you know, will be interesting to see how the technology develops. I don't know how far off it'll be. It seems like it's going to be a pretty crowded marketplace. So I'd be a word of advice to anyone assigning any real value to that in their stock valuation would be to just make sure that you're not assuming Tesla owns the full market because it seems pretty clear that's not going to be the case, even if it is a very valuable opportunity. Okay. Doge Army, Dan Robert, Dan Meta. Yeah. Thanks again for letting me come up here. And, and thanks again, Gordon, for putting your neck out there and uh, talking with us. I just had a kind of a big picture question for you that I hope you'll answer. And that's, you know, a lot of the bulls obviously put a lot of stock into Elon, the person we see the things he's doing at SpaceX and we see him giving, you know, functionality back to a paraplegic with Neuralink and, you know, starting a lot of companies to try to do a lot of good in the world. And I feel like when I listen to you, I hear you say that, you know, he's a liar and he's a fraud and he's doing things just to pump the stock. But what do you think if that, if those things are true, if you really believe that and you mean that, what do you think Elon's motivation is at this point? He's one of the richest people that have ever lived. He has hundreds of billions of dollars that he can have access to. He could sit on an island and sip, you know, Mai Tais for the rest of his life and never work again. Uh, what do you think Elon's motivation is? If you're If you're correct that He's a fraud and he's just trying to pump the stock. Like, for what purpose? 
can you answer that for us? Thanks. Okay. It, was that directed at me? Yes, sir. It, it was, but it is out of topic. So um, just keep it short, please. Then we'll go to Robert with AI answers. Yeah, so what's his motivation? Um, I think there's potential issues with respect to um, a number of claims that he's made um, and potential liabilities associated with those claims. And I think that if Tesla's stock price drops to a certain level, you know, our view is that Tesla is uh, immune from all U.S. laws, both roadway and securities. But if the stock price drops to a certain level, I believe that some of those immunities will, will, will not exist anymore. So with respect to what is his motivation, um, as we saw with Trevor Milton, as we saw with Elizabeth Holmes, um, you know, as we're probably going to see with the guy over at Lordstown, uh, there's real risk with making promises that uh, lead to, um, you know, financial losses and uh, more importantly, uh, you know, physical losses. So uh, if indeed there are some issues there, and, and we don't know if there are, certainly, but we do know, I mean, that, you know, from the painted black video to, you know, the cars hitting, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, what is it, fire trucks and emergency vehicles, et cetera. There could be some issues. Um, so, you know, I think that the motivation would be to, um, you know, not have those uh, those legal issues become real liabilities. Uh, that would certainly be a motivation of mine, no matter how rich I was. Robert. Uh, just to cover who I am, so I have some credentials behind me. Mercedes Benz gave me its first ride in its first autonomous car. Um, I have the first video on YouTube of a Waymo or a Google self-driving car, and I've written two books on spatial computing, uh, which are highly regarded, which is the technology that's underneath uh, autonomous cars. And I've interviewed uh, Sebastian Thrun, for instance, who runs the who started the Waymo company at Google, came out of Stanford, and uh, it chose the lidar on the Waymo cars. And he says today he would choose camera only approach compared to what he had to choose for the Waymo company, because back when he made the choice to put uh, LIDARs in the car, they didn't have enough compute to do the conversion from 2D cameras into 3D worlds or 3D digital twins that the Tesla is now able to do. I also personally talked to Ford's CTO, who said Elon is right about camera-only approach, and that's why Ford has chosen to go with camera-only on its Mustang e-car, and on and on. The car, you really, Gordon, you should come and understand. By the way, Siri was launched in my house. That was the first consumer app to use artificial intelligence in the consumer world. And I've been tracking the AI world since then. I have the only map of the entire AI industry here on X, including more than 4,000 companies that are in the AI space. So I've been tracking this for a long time. And you're absolutely wrong when you say uh, the system that's driving the autonomous car, the system that's driving full self-driving in uh, your Tesla is not AI. It's a neural network, totally new, by the way. The FSD 12.3 that just is turning on for people, literally, my, my uh, uh, neighbor just got it this morning. So the fleet is continuing to get this new build. This new build is an end-to-end -end neural network. It is AI. So, and I've talked to many experts, and yes, you're right. There is a disagreement. There are some experts who feel that you need LiDAR, and I've talked to many companies, including the CEO of InnoVision, which makes the LiDAR for the front bumper of the BMW. He says you need LiDAR to have a redundant system for insurance purposes over camera only approaches. And he's trying to sell a LiDAR to car companies. So he has a little bit of a stake in the game and a, a little bit of, uh, you know, a, a bias there. But there is that point of view that you need a LiDAR uh, to be a complete, to get to completely uh, version five. Now, when you start saying level five, level five has to drive in a blinding snowstorm or in fog that a human can barely see through. 
And there is a little bit of an advantage, for instance, with a, a radar, because radar can go through fog and snow and see a reflection off of the, the road around you and the car in front of you. So there might be a need for that to get to complete level five. But my car proves that it drives fine with just cameras, no LIDAR needed. Meta. Okay. Meta. Can I address that uh, or no? Sure. Gordon and then Meta. Yeah, so uh, first off, uh, you need LIDAR and radar, based on all the experts I talked to, to attempt to get to level five, number one. I, I talked to different experts who have come to a different right. conclusion than you. Yeah. Uh, number two. Okay. Yeah. Number two, the FSD take rates in the U.S. I think were as high as like close to 50%. And they've imploded to 10%, roughly 10%. FST take rates globally were as high as I think 30%. And they've imploded to like I think around 4% currently. So they're not this, it's not available in China or fact. in Europe. Robert, you, hold on, no, no cutting it's, off. It's a fact that FSD take rates have imploded. So the people who actually buy Tesla cars are not buying FSD. And that that number is getting exponentially worse. That that's just a fact. That's number two. And then number three. Right. Tesla is giving it away for free now. Right. They're effectively forcing you to take it. So, you know, what you stated, I think your name is Robert, you know, was a lot of a lot of words. But again, I just focus on reality. And the reality is FSD take rates have imploded. Tesla's ranked last by any outfit that ranks or close to last by any outfit that ranks autonomous driving. Um, and, you know, since 2016, there's a video on this, which I can send anyone who wants it. You know, Elon Musk has been saying we're going to have, you know, level five FSD next year and we're still nowhere close to being there. So I, I just don't understand why uh, the faithful continue to have faith in this, given, you know, we've had history with this. Um, Could I okay. ask All right. that, Yaman? No, 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 no. We have a number of people speaking. Uh, but the, the, the reason why I find that to be balanced here is because we have a 10 to 1 ratio right now of bulls to bears. So I have to take, you know, meta, then machine. And then Kristen. Gordon, do you think any company is going to achieve autonomy at, at the whatever definition you want to call it? And if so, when do you think that happens? Um, so, again, there is a specific definition, and it's for level five um, autonomy, which is a road. That's that that is what a robo taxi is. It's not level four. It's level five. and. I, again, I forget the exact amount of miles, but I think it's like a million, something like that without any interventions and no one's close. So with respect to do I think someone's going to achieve it? I mean, you've had a lot of smart guys working at it for a long time and we're nowhere near close, right? Elon Musk since 2016 has said that his cars will have level five FSD or you know full autonomy uh, at full self-driving, which is level five next year. And we're still not there, right? That's That's eight years ago, right? So with respect to when we're going to do it, I don't know. But again, the experts would tell you it's at least 10 to 20 years off. Um, and that's for the guys who are more advanced in Tesla. Machine, Kristen, then 10. By the way, I don't know if you consider me a Tesla bull. I mean, I am in general, but all I own now is puts. <laughs> so that's, but, is, that, is that right? You're right puts? now? Yeah, I, what oh, do you mean? Wow. I told you the stock was going down to 150. So, anyways, after that, we'll see. Um, okay, so we have we have a very balanced board then. So we just I mean, switch we, sides. We all know I'm the most balanced person on here. Okay, I don't don't get emotionally driven up or down. And in this case, it's the same thing with FSD. I'm a data scientist. Meta also focused in the area. We have expertise in understanding how these models are built and the data needed for them and how to combine sensors. And what I would say is, it's totally fair to not trust Tesla over the years, given so many claims for you know eight to 10 years about what's gonna happen, and it hasn't happened yet. So ignore all that. Don't trust what people say. Trust what you see, trust the numbers, look in the strategy. And the strategy of building, these are certainly AI models, deep neural nets, trained on large amounts of interesting, useful data, will yield you very useful systems. Now, 
when those systems become actually to the level of accuracy and reliability to be robo taxis is yet to be determined. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen. You hear a lot of people using words about exponential growth and the thing's going to happen in five months from now, or it's going to be 10 years from now. Well, we don't know for sure. We just know is the general approach right? Focus on the data. The fact is, is that if you've driven in one of these vehicles, and I've actually been in one, <laughs> with the latest version it's pretty impressive um and i'm not someone who tends to be super biased uh and i would say it's much better than it was a few years ago now as for lidar lidar doesn't give you redundancy as in if the cameras fail the system's still gonna be able to drive all it does is reduce the error rate so that if there may be one occasion out of a million where the cameras miss an object or the right depth, the LIDAR could help in those cases. So yes, it's true, right. with proper sensor fusion, it right. could improve things on the edges, but there's no need to have those devices installed right now in the vehicles. Right. Once it's Thank already you. at 100,000 miles per disengagement, if you can't get any further, sure, add in the LIDAR. You can't trust people from those companies though, they're trying to sell the product. Yeah, all right. Uh, before we go to Kristen, just a quick note that we have new members of the Patreon that support this space. Bill, Rihanna Sugito, and Kishore Macha, thank you very much for joining Patreon, which allows this space to be free and open for everybody. And really loving this discussion right now. Balanced bulls, bears on the board. Really thank you for everybody for joining. Kristen, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Yaman. Yaman, sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna say maybe, maybe, maybe machine is Gordon's um, expert for AI. Not sure about that, but I was gonna say. For, for AI, not sure about that. But I was going to say, you know, people are holding, um, <laughs> they're holding Tesla to these in whatever. I don't think he even conceived that the pandemic would be working one over on Tesla. And so people are like, oh, oh my gosh, it didn't deliver like five years like it should have. But I mean, give me a break. We literally went through pandemic and most, I mean, there's so many businesses that closed. There's a lot of groups that were doing really well. The government was handing out money to bail people out. So I think that has to be factored in. I think we can't just look at the timeline and go, look at it just didn't do well, or Elon didn't deliver like you promised. Cause I don't think that's fair. Can I address that? Um, just give me one second with Temp and then Gordon, then Grant. Temp. Hey, Gordon. Uh, I just want to compliment your skills as an interlocutor. Um, you're a very good debater. Um, and I just want to ask uh, if you could familiarize everybody here in the space who may not be familiar with you, with your track record on Tesla and when you first made the bear call and uh, how you've been since then. Yeah, sure. So we effectively initiated Tesla around $300. I think it was 2018 or 2019. So split adjusted, that would be $100. So right now we're still very wrong. And on the stock price, we've been very wrong. You know, that's 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 just a fact. So does that answer your question? It does, but I don't think it's the truth. I remember specifically 2016, 2017, that you were a bear on Tesla and at $15 a share split adjusted 10x uh, in the uh, in the rear view mirror. So I'm glad I didn't listen to you back then. I did buy at that, at that time myself. So All right, thank you, uh, Gordon, would you like to uh, address what Kristen was saying? Yeah, so with respect to this, this popular argument that Elon Musk always delivers, that's just factually incorrect. Um, and let me explain. So number one, the panels he showed Tesla investors to convince them to buy Solar City on which was it was on the set of Desperate Housewives. It was a house on the set of Desperate Housewives. Uh, those panels were fake and they've never been produced. So that wasn't a promise that he didn't deliver on. Uh, one could argue that was a, a mistruth. Um, with respect to him filing a 10G instead of a, a 10 uh, uh, the, the, the filing he did with respect to Twitter, where he said he wasn't going to have any significant um, uh, role as as an insider, and his filing was wrong. That's again, that's that's not him 
making a, you know, a promise that he didn't deliver on. That's just an outright mistruth. Um, and the same thing with the Paint It Black video. So this idea that he makes promises that he always delivers on, there's there's examples of that not being true. So I don't think you can say, uh, as a lot of people do, he always delivers. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Robert Scobo, for just joining Patreon. Appreciate that. It's because of patrons that this space is open and free for all. Thank you very much, everybody. Grant and then Robert. Sure, just a handful of comments. And again, I am a bear. Um, in response to a, a handful of things people have said over the last five, 10 minutes, I, someone asked what motivates Elon. And I think Elon is a narcissist. I think it's kind of clear. I would agree with Gordon that he is very comfortable bending the truth and, you know, putting a prettier picture on things than reality would typically, you know, dictate. I think that's certainly true. And then in response to, I think it was Kristen and the commentary around the, the pandemic. I mean, my personal belief is that Tesla has operated as something of a mean stock. And I don't think it would have experienced the level of uh, price appreciation in 2020 absent the handouts uh, that you mentioned the government was giving to people. I'll stop there. Robert and then Omar. Um, I've owned FSD since 2018. And yes, uh, Elon did rep misrepresent it, the timing of it. We, we all expected it to happen faster. And the whole autonomous industry has sort of expected it to happen faster. Um, Waymo is the leading company right now with a humanless driven car. You can go to San Francisco and watch it drive around the street and there's no human in, in board. So they are probably seen as the leader and I'd like to see what Gordon thinks of their vehicle and their strategy because they are only available in four cities now in the United States and there's 300 or 300 so cities that are bigger than 100,000 residents. Who is going to get what, number one first? And then have you done any customer research of understanding how fast the adoption is gonna happen? Because I've, I have, and I've talked to people in uh, many states in the, in the United States about autonomous cars and done consumer research. And I find there's a lot of resistance to getting in a vehicle without a steering wheel. Now, Google has data to prove we can talk about it. Anyways, I'd like to hear what Gordon thinks of the Waymo company, which came out of Google. Okay. I'll be with Gordon was like, Omar has raised his hand for a while. So Omar and then Gordon. Yeah, I just think it's funny that Gordon keeps talking about the paint it black video being fake when any Tesla in the United States right now can get a free trial of the software that does exactly what's depicted in that video. It can do drives anywhere on any road, you have to supervise, you have to intervene at times, but they didn't say this was the capability of the car. They said, this is what we're gonna let the car do. And they actually made that real. That car, if you bought a car in October, 2016 or later, it can run this FSD 12 software and nobody else has been able to put a product out like that. If you wanna buy a car that can attempt to do drives for you anywhere in the country, without any pre-mapping or a lot of expensive hardware. There's only one product on the market that can do it. So you can call the guy a narcissist, you can call him a fraud, you can call him any name you want. But the fact is, there's millions of people using this product and there's only a thousand Waymos on the road and nobody else has come close to doing what they're doing. Gordon. Yeah. So first I'll address Holmar's, what, what he said. Um, I don't know how else to say it than to say what he just said is moral bankruptcy. Um, he knows, I've seen his own videos where he's had to intervene in his cars, almost causing what would have been catastrophic accidents. To say that the paint it black video, the video starts out by saying the driver is only in the driver's seat for legal reasons. The car is driving itself. That's what the video starts out by saying. And then it proceeds to do three minutes of a continuous drive of the car driving itself around. That was completely doctored. We know that's not what happened. It was 500 miles of 
multiple interventions and the car actually crashing. So it's for you to sit here and say that video is real. It's just moral bankruptcy. You're lying. Number one. Uh, number two, with respect to what the other gentleman said, um, uh, I think he was asking me what I think of Waymo. Um, and, you know, this is my own opinion. So this isn't really analysis. But, you know, my dad was a truck driver at one point. Uh, a lot of my cousins are, you know, they have multiple jobs, one of which include Uber drivers. The idea that every car is going to be autonomous and that we're going to replace human drivers with cars that drive themselves, quite frankly, I think is never going to be achievable because the job destruction that that would bring would bring this country's, you know, the majority, the hardworking people, the blue collar people who you know use their cars to make money to their feet, to their knees, rather. So I just, you know, I, I understand all of you guys want your stocks to go up and you want to make a lot of money. But a lot of people rely on their cars, their trucks, et cetera, to provide money, food, housing for their families. So this idea that we're just going to replace all those jobs, I, I don't think that's ever going to really see fruition, because I think at some point the politicians will be forced to stop it, if that makes sense. Again, personal view, not analysis. OK, here's here's what we're going to do. Omar, Grant, then Machine, then Robert. So I use this software every day. It does all of my driving. I get in the car. I tell it where I want to go. I push the button. It drives me there. So you're telling me this is fake. It's not real. I and millions of other people use this every day. It's actually a real thing. So I think it's kind of funny that you think it's not a real thing. The I've seen your videos, Holmars, where you had to intervene in what would have been a catastrophic accident. And you're sitting here telling me that that's not what my eyes, what I saw with my eyes. Are no, you, I mean, you do have to bankrupt. intervene sometimes. Hold you on, do have on. to intervene sometimes. The video, yeah. says, the video says that the person is sitting in the seat only for legal reasons. The car is driving itself. That is categorically false. We know that's not true. So for you then to sit here and say that video is real, you're lying. And I don't understand why you're doing it other than to push yourself. No, okay. Because I mean, if right. somebody's listening to you. Itself. All right. Omar, then Grant. The car is doing the driving. It can just make mistakes, so you need human supervision. But the Paint It Black video was not trying to say, this is the software we have created. They showed this video when they started putting the hardware, the cameras in the car. And they said, we're going to start putting this hardware in the car. Over time, we'll actually be able to update the software and make the car drive better and better. Here's kind of a demonstration of what we think would be possible one day. And they actually made that true. Nobody else has done that. So, you know, I think playing back these comments. What you're saying years, is categorically false. The video, you know what? Nobody has to believe me or you. Uh, Gordon, Gordon, it's we have to. All right, we're going to we're gonna go out to. Okay. We're going to go to um, Grant. And then Omar, I'm going to send you a quick DM real quick. Grant. Yeah, I would. So a couple things. I am a Tesla bear. I, I would want to make sure that everyone on this space doesn't think that all tesla bears are kind of tech hating luddites i mean gordon i i hear what you're saying with regard to politicians not making fsd available because of the job losses that might entail i mean at the end of the day i think that would be fine i think in 50 years 100 years i don't know exactly when i'm sure a majority of driving will be done by computers that just makes sense i would expect that to be the case um and i don't think that this Tesla Q, Tesla, you know, pro Tesla debate should be framed in terms of the people that want tech versus don't want tech. I work in VC. I'm a tech, you know, advocate in general. I'm also short the stock because you can be both. Um, I, I would echo Gordon's comments that the pain in black video was a pretty egregious uh, misrepresentation of what the tech was capable of. I think his point that, you know, the, the tech today requires a driver in the driver's seat not for legal reasons but because the tech requires a driver in the driver's seat with their hands on the wheel eyes on the road ready to intervene at a moment's notice because the tech will do the wrong thing with potentially disastrous consequences i i think it's just disingenuous to say that you know mission accomplished goal complete we're there it's an eight ass today that's just what it is um one other comment just briefly Sheen. all right okay I think it's just not really relevant to talk about that v 2016 video anymore. I, I do believe 
the uh, competency was maybe over exaggerated at the time. But what does it matter now? You're trying to look forward at the current technology and where it's going to be in the next few years. And I can tell you, as someone who has actually ridden in Omar's car on FSD 12.3, that it is a pretty competent software. In fact, he wouldn't let me drive his car. He preferred to let it drive the car. He trusted it more than me, which I didn't think was very fair. Um, so is it fully autonomous? No. But this is some really advanced software, and I don't really think there's any denying it now. The question is simply, where is it going to go over the next few years? And talking about the past, I, what does it matter from an investment standpoint? Okay. Robert, then Kristen, then Adrian, then Nick. The jobs issue is something that we all should have a rational conversation about and think about because it is an issue that's coming and not just for autonomous or for drivers. I'm, I, I am seeing a lot of people getting laid off in call centers and warehouses. Amazon has 750,000 robots running their warehouses now. That wasn't true a few years ago. To, the reason I care about this, I, and yes, I'm a Tesla investor, so yes, I hope that it makes me some money someday, and it has, but the real reason I care about autonomy and the reason I got the first ride in the first Mercedes-Benz autonomous vehicle is two of my best friends in high school were killed in car accidents, and I looked in the, father, the father's eye of, of one of those people and saw the, the real harm that these tragedies caused to our communities. And so when a politician sits down and is going to have to decide on jobs, they also have to decide on safety. And these systems are going to lead to a system that is much, much safer than a human-driven system. Now we could argue, is that 10 years away? Is it five years away? Is it 50 years away? But it's coming in our future and certainly in my kids' future. And I hope that my kids have the ability to take a car that is computer driven in the future because it's going to be far safer than a human driven car. Now, is it today? No. FSD, when I first got it in 2018, couldn't change lanes, couldn't take off ramps, could barely stay in a lane. That's not true today. AI always starts worse than a child. Go and look at the AI that beat uh, the best human at the game of Go. When it started, it couldn't beat a child. It couldn't beat the worst human being at the game of Go, but it keeps getting better and better and better. And we call that the March of Nines. And it's very clear now that Tesla is on a March of Nines. Waymo is actually ahead in some ways in the March of Nines, because they started earlier, uh, because it started with Google's efforts. Google bought a, an autonomous car team from Stanford University and from Carnegie Mellon and are, are ahead in some ways. And so we can argue about these things, but there's more at play than just jobs. There's lives at stake here. And that's why I did so much research in this industry. I interviewed Ford's head of safety. Did you know that 80% of human beings in accidents don't apply full braking pressure? In other words, humans don't do the right thing in an accident. A computer will mostly do that the right way, right? Okay. Kristen. Yeah, Robert, I'm sorry that you lost your friends in high school. That's that's horrific. And I have to agree with what Robert's stating about that. Um, just for the listeners, uh, Tesla FSD is AI run. I mean, most people know that we don't. It, Tesla didn't hire Carpathy just to sit around and pretend that he was doing something there. I mean, this is an AI run part of the part of the. <laughs> Sorry, this is an AI. Sorry, something popped up. It was Motorhead coming up. Um, this is an AI run part of the company. And <laughs> it, it, it's silly to assume it's not. I don't understand how Gordon's asking experts and then assuming that it's not even run by AI. That's just strange to me anyways. I smiled when I saw that too. This is an interesting room right now. And it's going to get more interesting just, just now. Adrian? 
Yo, what's up? Hey, Gordon, it's your worst nightmare on the line. Um, can you tell me, you are basing your conclusions off of, say, FSD beta videos, specifically from 2016. What do you say about, say, FSD being able to do a zero intervention drive recently, the supervised, by the way? So this is, there's a key word with supervised. I think it's much more safer to have a car that has supervision basically being driven by two people than it does to have, say, a human who actually causes exponentially more damages in terms of mistakes made due to cognitive impairment of driving on a boring, boring road. Um, so so what, what do you say to that? What do you say about a zero intervention drive? By the way, this is not an April, it was not an April Fool's post. So yeah, what do you say about the zero intervention drives? Apparently FSD fails all the time. So I, I looked up to what defines level five and it's a million miles without an intervention. And I think with most Teslas, you can't even go 10 miles without in a busy city without an intervention. So, you know, the idea that you make one drive and there's no interventions, I, I you know, and, and, and all of a sudden you know, you're talking about level five is, for lack of a better word, ludicrous and ridiculous. There's specific definitions again, and Tesla is nowhere near close to being within even a, a, a uh, you know, an earshot of those definitions of what define uh, level five FSD. Um, and with respect to somebody who said the painted black video doesn't matter, I think it does matter because um, if you watch the the Hulu documentary on Tesla um, and you listen to those two engineers that talked about that painted black video, you know, they say that, you know, it was Elon Musk who who led that video and he's still leading Tesla and still leading their FSD um, and autonomous initiatives. So again, if, as the video states, if he's willing to say no one's in the driver's seat, the car's driving itself, and we know that's not true, you know, what else is he, is he willing to do? I don't know the answer to that, but it's quite concerning, uh, to, to, to say the least. Okay. Nick, Dan Grant. Yeah. Hey, Gordon. So we've heard all the doom and gloom, Tesla's, uh, uh, you know, miss this, miss that. Elon's lied about this, about that. And I was just wondering if, if there's anything positive that you can say that Tesla has done, you know, financially um, or achieved um, positive. Yeah, I mean, so Elon Musk is one of the great uh, salesmen I think I've ever seen. Um, and I do think that without Elon Musk, if it was any other CEO, I think Tesla stock would be significantly lower because I don't think that um, anyone other than Elon Musk is willing to take the risks he did. And those that do, uh, like Trevor Milton, um, you know, are quickly ousted. Um, so I think that his ability to sell things that aren't real um, and some that are, I think is bar none. And I think that there's, uh, you know, there's real quality in that, particularly for the shareholders. I will say, as one person highlighted, you know, the Fed printing you know, 300 years of Fed balance sheet expansion in three months in 2020 is, I think, a lot of the reason why Tesla's stock went to the moon. You know, we again, we initiated at 300, stock went to 160, and then it went to, you know, 800. I think without the Fed doing what they did, I don't think you would have had that mem like rise in Tesla. And, and by the way, we're paying the results of that via inflation, which is hitting the, 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 the least portion of the Mondays, but we don't have to get into that discussion. Right. But yeah, I would say Elon Musk's sales ability is bar none. All right, we're going to break the bear, the um, from bear to bull. Adrian, Dan Grant. Actually, I'll go ahead straight to Grant. I want to see what he has okay, to say. Okay, Grant. Yeah, so just briefly, two points. Um, I think V12 is a great piece of software. It seems like a great approach. It's definitely light years ahead of where the tech was even a year ago. Um, kind of bridging Gordon and Robert's comments, I think that it really does become a March 9s type thing. And I really do think that it's still a very long way from being able to operate as a true robo taxi. Understand that AI can move fast, but this isn't ChatGPT. This isn't an application playing Go. This is, you know, thousands of pounds of metal flying around at high speeds in ways that can kill people if it makes a mistake. So I think the, you know, stakes are just completely different. And then Nick, to your question, I think an interesting thing that I feel 
exists today with the stock is that you've got a lot of bears who are looking at the near term results. I don't see anything positive about today's announcement. I think that 2024 is going to be a horrifically challenging year for the financials and the actual numbers inside of this business. Um, it's just going to be rough. And that's part of why I am a bear. I think that the people who are bullish on the stock are thinking about Optimus and all these other things that are potentially years and years away. I just think it's an interesting kind of backdrop for all of the discussion around the stock. Adrian. So go ahead. Um, obviously, there's a definition for, I think, a so, so, so personally, there is a problem. I don't think FCC itself will ever be fully operational without any errors at all. Sure, maybe you'll get that thousand, you know, thousand mile goal. Maybe you'll reach it. Maybe this will be the case. But I, but people are very chaotic, and chaos itself is a correctional function. So the problem is this: there will always be a chance of failure. What do you think to you would be an exceptional, like an acceptable margin of failure? You know, like how how, how many failures per miles? Like, give give me something. Yeah, that, that's a theoretical question. I'm not the expert there, but again, the 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 definition I think is a million miles without intervention, and I think that you know I'm not going to take Holmars up on his 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 invitation for me to fly you know six hours to San Francisco to sit in a car um, on FSD, but one of you guys can do it, and I think that I, I I'd be willing to bet a beer that he'll have an intervention before ten miles, and I, I think for him to then get on and say that he, he he drives every day without interventions, I just think it's disingenuous and quite frankly, dangerous, because if someone listens to him, you know, they may trust this thing without having their hands on the wheel. And that's not fair to um, those of us on the road who didn't sign up to this experiment. I mean, you kind of did. If you purchase the software, you look into it, you can actually see it's literally written there. You kind of did sign up for it. If it says beta, you can obviously ex you can obviously expect there to be instabilities. And if no, it's I'm a supervised, I, I mean, I didn't sign well, up you didn't say, OK, OK, cool. But how did you? On the road okay but how are you signing this up oh, oh oh okay so so you're implying basically risk to your personal safety by someone else's actions by saying that they're driving around with faulty software is that your argument correct <laughs> i'd rather say it's the other way around that the uh that, that you are actually safer if there's a car such as this running the software because the 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 the, the the potential for very negative outcomes actually decreases fundamentally when you have more things paying attention to the road. Say, for instance, there are situations where Teslas were almost in an accident, but the software itself noticed that there was that a full stop was needed, and it actually did do a full stop. Say, for instance, like there was this case where somebody ran a red light, and the Tesla car actually stopped before all the other cars because it had the software in it. Now, I would say that actually you'd be safer on the road if something such as this AI, which is essentially seeing and reacting faster than any human could ever, like you'd be, you'd, you'd be much more safer on the road if there were more cars running this type of software. And I mean, sure, it does have a few issues every now and then, but most human drivers don't even know what they are actually doing. Sometimes you even say sneeze, and then you are traveling, say, several kilometers. Uh, like, have you ever looked at how long a sneeze actually takes to complete and how long you've kept your eyes closed and how far you've traveled? FSD, for instance, doesn't do that. I mean, I understand that you know, with the expectation of saying full self-driving comes the idea that it is full self-driving, and it is to an extent. The only problem is you have to still supervise it. I mean, you wouldn't take a 16-year-old dude who has barely any understanding of how to drive, put him behind a steering wheel and not supervise him. Would you do this? Would you like, say, take a 16-year-old, put him, put him in front of the, put him in the driver's seat, and then not supervise them? Is that a question? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, I'll just say this. Look, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited that you're on the other side of this trade. Um, and with respect to your questions, again, I'll state the facts. FSD take rates have imploded over the past three years. Guidehouse ranks FSD last, as well as the three separate experts independently of each other I speak to. And Tesla is currently giving Who are your experts? Hold on. Tesla is currently giving it away for free. So those are three facts. I mean, you can take from that what you will. Yeah, the for free is basically just like an advertisement because there is a lot of misinformation online about how exact like, about FSD's functionality because everybody says, oh, you know, it's this, it's that. But there's hardly ever any facts. Uh, what I would like to know is who are your experts? 
Uh, I don't share that information. Why? Hey, guys, hey, I got to run. Thanks a lot. No, no, uh, I hope yeah. I wish you guys the best. Take care. <laughs> okay. I apologize. That's okay. That's all right. This space has been going on for more than four hours anyway. Um, we have a number of speakers with questions to speak. So let's go through them, and then we'll end the space after that. Kristen, go ahead. Girl, I can't even remember. That was too funny. I mean, he, he doesn't give his experts, which, I mean, what is he going to do? Reveal people who actually know something? Um, sorry, that, that was good. And, and, and I'm, I mean, people can short the stock or do whatever they want. At the end of the day, it is an AI company. It does sell automotives, and it does excellent with that. But, yeah, this was entertaining. Thanks, Yaman. Yeah, thanks for joining everybody. This has been this has been a lot of fun. Adrian. Yeah, I see motorheads in the crowd. I believe that you have had an issue with my account specifically. Uh, I think that would be a bit, uh, like a, a really good time to like say clear some stuff up. You got any questions for me, hey, Yaman? If that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Motorhead and then Omar. Yeah. Um, which factory are you going to close first? I don't know why you would want to ask me that. I'm, oh yeah, sorry, I must clarify, I'm not Elon. I just vaguely happen to sound like the guy. This is a weird little quirk in the simulation. Randomness tends to accelerate some things to a point. So yeah, I don't really know why this is possible. I don't know what this is. Don't worry about it. I can't tell you the answer to which factory is gonna close. Rather than that, I could actually tell you he's probably gonna open a few more because if you haven't noticed in the past, He's actually upscaling production of his vehicles, thereby trying to make more profit, thereby trying to expand more and do more production and expand even more to then eventually reach critical mass. Right. Um, who's going to buy the Model 3 and Y from here on until 2028? I don't know. Everyone who's going to have to get rid of their ICE cars thanks to the uh, 2030 sustainability goals. Have you read them? Sure. Um, but... Who, how are you, how are you to, who are you to say that they're going to be kept up? I mean, right now ice is is slowing down very rapidly. Ice needs to be fully like you're you're going to be measured on your carbon footprint so much so that you basically need to get an EV, and you can't exactly rely on any of the other EV suppliers because their cars are quite frankly shit and too expensive for the quality that they provide. What about the Prius? <laughs> <laughs> the Prius. Oh, you mean that thing with the very, very small battery pack that tends to give out after, say, I don't know, eight years or so? It's really, really bad. I've had this one case where somebody, uh, I had to do a rush drop fix on this car because basically you couldn't turn it on anymore because his batteries were dead. Oh, and I don't quite understand the concept of going half in. Like, if you're going to do EV, you go full in, not half out, because if you're going to have this much fucking battery at the back of your car, especially lead acid batteries, which is the stupidest idea you could ever have, then... I don't know, man. I feel like you're setting yourself up for failure, catastrophic failure, as a matter of fact. All right. Omar. Yeah, I just thought that Gordon's comments on autonomy were really instructive of what I think a lot of the bears sort of think. I mean, you have people like Grant who I think understand things a little better and are more balanced, but a lot of people just don't understand where this technology is, that you can get driverless rides today how good the software is that yes even though you have to supervise it it can do point-to-point -point drives and that there is a financial impact before full autonomy that this is a multi-billion dollar business today so i think when you just look at that viewpoint and i think it's a very common viewpoint oh it's all fake it's a fraud he exaggerated it's the worst in the industry i think it's really setting us up for a surprise compared to some of the more bearish expectations Wes? Wes, you're on mute. Uh, let's go to James Alger. Oh, hey, guys. Uh, long time listener, first time caller, I guess I would say. Um, hey, Omar, long time no talk. I also find it amazing that we listen to Gordon Johnson, who has made a career out of being wrong about Tesla. And when he kept saying, the car can't go 10 miles without intervention. I just drove this morning from Long Beach to Porter Ranch, California, which is a lot more than 10 miles. 
And I did not touch, well, I touched the steering wheel, but did not intervene until it was time to pull into my driveway. So it's just, it's unbelievable what's happening. Now, the better half works down at SpaceX. So I'm down there with these people all the time and hanging out with these engineers all the time. And I just it'd get a little bit sick and tired of watching these people demean the good work that these people down there are doing at SpaceX and Tesla, which is, I mean, it's, it's a yeoman's work, but I do think we are approaching the March of the Nines. I think we're getting really close to how are we ever going to get it to be the 100%? Because what co- people like Gordon are going to do is, you know, to borrow Joe Biden's phrase, they're going to compare it to the almighty and not the alternative. And they want perfection while they simultaneously go back and pave over their statements from the past. Uh, you know, every time they said Elon wasn't going to do this, Elon wasn't going to do that. Everything Elon's ever accomplished, everything SpaceX and Tesla has ever accomplished, they've accomplished while the world was telling them they can't do it and they were laughed at. And I think we got to just take a step back to remember that. Thank you. Let's go to Grant and then Jonathan. Yeah, I hear it. And I think that there's definitely value to be captured via a really good ADAS system. But I do think that the real value unlock is ultimately going to be robo taxis. And I hear you on the March 9s. I think it's a ways away. A second topic on that front is that maybe I, I don't really know what the process is for getting this approved. Like, I suspect that everything is geofenced anyway, because you'll need to work through permitting with state or local authorities to get access to like robo taxi functionality in their jurisdiction. Um, And I just haven't seen anyone really indicate what that looks like in practice. I think this is years and years away from being a reality. Jonathan, that must have really Good afternoon, everyone. So I have a challenge for everyone on the call that is very skeptical about FSD in general, or even AI. Right now, I'm literally driving home from work in the tech industry by AI completely on FSD. And I've been driving FSD for a very short time in in comparison to a lot of you, probably about seven months since I was able to buy this car. And in that short time, it allows you to notice so much about how people, how humans are typically the ones that cause accidents, A, and B, how much more attentive a computer is to driving. So my challenge is to those who are skeptical about it, take a ride in FSD or even autopilot. It is so much safer as a baseline compared to the majority of human drivers than anyone out there. So safety All right. is a number one key for me. Thank you, Mr. Redut, and then Freddy. Hi, I'm on Fantastic Space tonight. I really enjoy seeing Motorhead and uh, Gordon Johnson. Too bad that he left, as I wanted to ask him, as he told us that level five has to do one million miles without one mistake. Do you think that the best driver can run 2,000 miles without one single mistake? Yeah, Freddy. Um, I wanted to go back and and touch on Grant's question on, you know, how is this going to get approved from a regulatory perspective? A key tenet of U.S. law is that things are permitted unless they are prohibited. uh, By law. And so judging at it from that perspective, the vast majority of states prohibit the operation of driverless cars and you know their regulations are a little bit behind the times in that respect because they really just haven't anticipated this being uh an issue can i respond to that i I just want to ask the so like i i don't know enough but just it's your understanding that if tesla tomorrow said from our perspective these are safe enough to be robo taxis go on get in the back seat that would be allowed, basically. Correct. Um, there would be products liability implications, um, but as long as you know they're, the car is safe enough for you know that damage calculus to be satisfied. I mean, go back and think about sort of the the Ford Pinto cases, right? The cost of litigating is is higher than 
you know, the cost of doing the fix. Um, you know, if, if somebody wants to play this aggressively, they can make the calculus of, you know, we think the cars are safe enough. We're going to just assume that liability. Yeah, I hear you there. I, I'm struggling to believe that, though. I was under the impression that Waymo and Cruz had to go through permitting and regulatory approval processes to get their cars on the road in California and some of the other places. They operate. Yeah, they're operating in states that actually do have regulations. Got it. So, but, but like so Texas, Tesla would there's need no to do law. That in like California, for yeah. instance, but not everywhere. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. We have Gordon back, but we're going to go to Motorhead first, then Wes, then Gordon. Hey, Amon, thanks for the space today. Um, I just, I, I, I sort of want to shift to to um, deliveries. I mean, this was a, a really bad print. I thought there's no way that uh, Tesla would allow their sales to go down year on year, and they actually did. Um, so I think their ability to sort of move the metal is is waning. Um, I think it has something to do with uh, both the EV market slowing down. Adoption is, I mean, it's still growing, but it's its uh, markedly slowing down. And you're seeing hybrids actually grow faster than EV growth, sales growth. So I'm just wondering, I mean, um, the big question for me is everybody's, everyone's saying that, you know, I think Grant said, you know, 2024 is going to be tough. I'm wondering how they get to 2027 or 2028 when the... Uh, $25,000 Model 2 is out. Um, you know, another three years of this kind of uh, delivery and pricing, you know, momentum, um, I think it burns cash. I, I just wonder, you know, how everybody thinks about that. I can take that. I mean, you know, Motherhead, I think you understand the impact of interest rates on vehicle um, orders and capital goods orders and you know right now the interest rates are restricted by about three percent and right. the fed has indicated interest rates will decline over time and these prices for the model three model y aren't going to stay where they are today they're going to maybe increase a little bit before the model the next next gen model comes to market right you understand all that but the, no, but the thing is, um, high interest rates haven't stopped sales of like Toyota and, you know, Honda from growing. Um, that's why I think, you know, the interest rate argument doesn't really make sense. Well, no, because, you know, you're kind of noting the monthly reports, quarterly reports that the other kind of legacy automakers are putting out. But the fact is, the inventory on dealership lots has been increasing quite fast for all legacy automakers, including Toyota and Honda. Yeah, no, the, the, but the thing is, you know, the overall market is uh, in the U.S. is up 11 percent year on year. Um, it, it's just sort of hard to see how how Tesla can sort of like, you know, uh, slug this out over the next three or four years. OK, Omar and Robert. Yeah, I think the long term trajectory of EVs still looks strong. There are some people who think EVs were just a fad. This is all coming undone now. Maybe people want hybrids. There's others who are more on the side that we're seeing some cyclical weakness here. And I think that's the case. You're seeing fuel prices rising really rapidly during the pandemic. I think that drove a pull forward in EV demand, a lot of people switching. Now you're seeing fuel prices coming down. You're seeing interest rates higher. So the cost of financing that battery pack is greater. And you're seeing growth slow a little bit. But I think you look at just the product pipeline they have. They've got some really great products this year. And they've got really a stronger differentiation today than they ever have. Not just with electric, but with software. Omar, with their what's soft, product, software what's ecosystem, their OS and FSD. Omar, sorry, what, what products do they have this year? They've got a new Model 3 out. They've got a Cybertruck, which I just picked up, which is, I think, a really incredible vehicle. As they ramp these up, I think people are just going to be really thrilled with them. And the big one, okay. of course, is, yeah. Motherhead, you have to stay on mute and raise your hand, wait for your turn like everyone else. Robert, Dan Gordon. I think the point of uh, softness in electric vehicles is a good one. 
we need to do a better job of selling everyday people on electric vehicles. And there is a lot of fear of range anxiety and having to sit at a supercharger and charge. And there's, uh, in, for instance, in New York, there's a far less density of electric vehicles because people don't have a garage that they can plug a car into. And these are real fears that people have. And if we want the electric vehicle industry to grow, not just Tesla, we have to take on those fears and show them why an electric vehicle is a better way to go. And I think we haven't, we haven't, all of us haven't done a good, as good a job as we could in explaining why an electric vehicle is a better choice than a Tesla, than a Toyota, I mean, or a, a gas vehicle. I had a Prius for a, a, a decade. I can tell you the difference. It's extraordinary. Go get a ride. Gordon. Yeah, just, I wanted to make one last point with respect to AI. And I think maybe people forgot this, but I just want to remind people. So Tesla's whole AI team just recently left. Uh, Bill Chang, who is the principal system engineer working on AI, left Tesla last October. And their Dojo supercomputer project lead, Ganesh, left in December of last year. So their entire AI team recently left the company, number one. And then number two, Elon Musk himself said he was going to develop AI outside of Tesla unless he had roughly 25% voting control. So the CEO himself is telling you that he's going to do it outside of Tesla. So my point is, when everyone says, not everyone, but when a lot of people in this room say that Tesla is an AI company, they're an AI leader, again, reality doesn't match up to that prognostication slash vagary. Thank you. Okay. Um, skip to Adrian real quick. Adrian? You do realize that a Tesla car is essentially a robot on wheels, right? Okay, Wes? Yeah, so I still have friends uh, in AI at Tesla. And so that's just completely not true. The other thing that I want to say is that the entire AI field is laughing at Gordon when he says this because he just has simply no idea how engineering works. So I can see why he might think that the so-called experts that he talks to might say differently, but the whole field is just laughing. Uh, the data that's reported by the fleet determines when regulators will or will not allow FSD to operate without supervision. And this will take time, but we are on that path. That is the path that we're walking down. And it will be the safest system ever created by humanity for transportation. And that is the goal. Thank you, Wes. Grant, then Omar. Yeah, two quick things. First, just to respond to Wes, uh, the data reported by the fleet, I'm guessing that would be miles per intervention because as it exists, the data from the fleet includes a human driver. So it's hard to say that, hey, this is going great with a human driver. So it's safe for someone to get in the back seat. Going back separately to the deliveries topic, I think one thing that hasn't been discussed is the impact that Elon's having on, you know, the appeal of this brand. I, from time to time, will just do a search in Twitter here and say, never buy Tesla. And there are just hundreds and hundreds of people who have been alienated by Xantix as of late. A lot of folks that maybe would have been Tesla buyers or our current Tesla owners who have no interest in ever buying a car from a brand that's affiliated with them now. I think that he's done a tremendous amount of damage and I think it's worth keeping that in mind as a potential factor too. It doesn't help. Okay, let's give a quick word to Wes to respond to what Grant said and then Omar. Yeah, on the FSD topic, the regulators have engineers and professional drivers who gather data as well as well as Tesla having a professional driver fleet that gathers data. So it's not just from the wider fleet, from consumers or people who've purchased it, but it's actual people who work at NHTSA and, and IHS and Euro and China NCAP. They're doing this driving as well. And they are, uh, they are employed by these agencies. So I just want to let you know that like that's how that data is gathered. It's not like Tesla saying, you know, it's all good. Don't review any of it. They're gathering their own data as well. Omar and Matthew. 
Well, I just think it's impressive given Gordon said they fired the entire AI team and they just put out version 12, which everyone's been loving. I guess Operation Vacation really was a success. So that's really a great thing. But, you know, really, it's just a sign that bears like Gordon have no clue what they're talking about. They're totally ignorant about what's going on in the company. They believe things like the entire team has been fired and they're not driving the software every day like we are. Uh, we have a new speaker, Matthew. It says, um, co-founder of Open Critic, former NVIDIA Cruise. Go ahead, Matthew. Yeah, thanks. I am curious about the uh, perspective on version 12, because from what I've seen looking at the data dashboard and watching videos, it still looks like Tesla is in a very similar range of a dis safety related disengagement every 100 to 200 miles, which is you know very far behind companies like Waymo, Zooks, even Cruise that are in the tens of thousands of miles. Um, I'm also curious how people feel about uh, the lack of reporting for California DMV guidelines. It sure looks like when someone is driving a Tesla car that you know, they are doing the role of a safety driver that would be at Zooks, you know, who's testing on the roads in San Francisco. And all of those disengagements at Zooks, Cruz, Waymo, you know, there are 162 autonomous vehicle companies in California now, uh, according to the California DMV. You know, they all report every single disengagement as it happens. They rate it, how safety critical it was. And it seems like Tesla is skirting those rules so I'm curious how people sort of gather confidence that FSC is actually getting better. Um, and I'm also curious when people think Tesla will have a road, a car on the road that does not have a driver inside of it. Okay, Adrian, Wes, Omar. No, no, I'll, pa I'll pass for one spot. Real okay, quick. Wes. Yeah, and talking about uh, the data. So Elias has been tracking data for three years. Uh, just just short of three years, I believe. And he's got a set of drivers and he collects it, this data and posts it online. And it's in several different states. And the number has shot up drastically with version 12. And so it currently sits at 374 miles to a critical disengagement in the city, which is key because the version 12 software is operating in cities end-to-end -end neural networks, but on the highways, it's still uh, heuristics for controls and planning. So I wanna be sure that people understand that is that's the key metric right now. Eventually, hopefully soon, version 12 will be integrated for highway travel as well, like class four, class five highways. But right now it's the critical metric is critical disengagements in urban, and that's currently it's sitting at 374. So that's what we're watching. That's what the engineers are watching to see how well this uh, software is functioning. So, so don't oh you think that's way behind? Matthew, I, I mean, you have to, Matthew, you have to wait on, just like everybody else, may, wait on mute, raise your hand. We'll come back to you. Right now we have about half bears, half bulls, which is, I think, means that, you know, we should stick to our one to two minute limit per person and in order of uh, hands. Omar? Yeah, this is a common misconception people have where they say, oh, these other systems are doing thousands of miles driverlessly when they don't realize that it's not an apples to apples comparison. When you look at what they're doing with pre-mapped miles where everything's carefully curated, I mean, I take Waymo all the time. There's a turn, for example, where there's this big metal bar on Green Street and FSD has an issue with that intersection. I had to go left there yesterday in a Waymo, and the Waymo just avoided it. It went to the next street over. So they very carefully curate these experiences. They map everything out. They see where all the problems are. They don't go there. It's not a system like Tesla's where you just have cameras that process everything with vision, and it can work anywhere. And the difference is they're able to achieve scale that nobody else has. with Waymo. Nobody's really taking it. So let's say they're reducing crashes somewhat. The impact's going to be small because you've got a fleet of about a thousand cars. With Tesla's fleet of six million vehicles running the software, their active safety features in AI are preventing crashes all the time. 
every day, stopping crashes with pedestrians, other cars, because the system is simple enough that it can run on on an ordinary mass-produced car. So in that metric, if you really look at apples to apples, working anywhere, not relying on a map, but just pure visual processing, Tesla's far ahead of anybody else. Okay. Adrian, then Matthew. I'll yield to Matthew once more. I feel like he had a point. Okay, Matthew, then Adrian. Yeah, so I guess I'm just, I, I'm looking at this dashboard. I had no idea this existed, by the way. This is very, very cool. But even on this, you know, it, it seems to indicate that they're going 150 kilometers in June 2022, and now they're going 600 kilometers or, uh, you know, 300 miles or whatever we want to call it, 374 miles. I, I'm really curious, like, how you guys see this rate of improvement as acceptable. You know, if they're tripling every two years, to me, that would imply that they are still a decade or more away from achieving a car that's safe enough that you can just hop on the backseat and have no driver. Um, so I'm curious, you know, what what gives you so much confidence that they are actually making progress when the disengagement data is is still, you know, really far away from from Tesla assuming liability for the car. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not an FSD beta user. I, I believe that next question should be going to remember that as now I'll have a question about demand later on because people have projections on that, but for now you'll Okay. I I think we're gonna focus on FSD for the next half hour. So we have a really good group of speakers. Uh from Omar, who's been one of the OG testers, obviously, Wes, who actually worked on Tesla autopilot at Tesla. And uh we have Matthew, uh, clearly, you know, some level of knowledge on the topic as well. We have Robert and others as well. All right, great. Wes, go ahead. Yeah, the data currently shows with version 12, uh, the miles spiking up to 374. And that's city critical disengagements. Before version 12, that number was way lower. So with version 4, we have, or sorry, with version 11, we've been bouncing around in like, you know, the 10 to 20 to 30 miles per critical disengagement. So this is a huge leap. That's why we're excited about it as engineers. We know that when you replace heuristics with neural nets, you're gonna see a lot of emergent behavior where the car does interesting things. And those interesting things are actually resulting in the car 